These days, almost every U.S. college accepts both the SAT and the ACT. Some even require the optional essay. While there are colleges that would be impressed if you submitted both, you're not required to submit both to any of them. Some schools won't actually need to see either. Nevertheless, folks, there is value in taking one or both of these exams. A high score can make you a more competitive candidate for admission, even to some test optional schools, and it can qualify you for merit-based scholarship dollars. If you decide you're gonna take one, you still need to make a choice. SAT or ACT, ACT or SAT, how do you decide? Asking whether you should take the ACT or the SAT is like asking whether you should bake an apple pie or a chocolate cake. The decision comes down to two factors, personal preference and audience. Folks, if you've been comfortably baking apple pies your whole life, now is not the right time to switch to chocolate cake. Here's what I mean. There are 18 states that require you to take the ACT as a high school test and 10 plus the District of Columbia that require you to take the SAT. And if you're living in sunny Hawaii, lucky you, by the way, you're likely already honing your skills for ACT. Whereas if you're freezing in Maine, you're already buckling down with SAT prep. That said, if you're dissatisfied with your current test performance or you've never taken the other test, then the best thing to do is take a practice test of each type and then focus on the one that you feel more comfortable with. Of course, you should still know a little bit about both exams before you take it, even in a practice setting. So I'm going to break it down here for you by test, and then you can sort out a pro and con list yourself as we compare features on both exams. Both tests are roughly three hours in length, but the composition of those sections is drastically different. The ACT has nearly 40% more questions. There are 154 questions on the SAT, but a whopping 215 on the ACT. That means that you're going to have less time to answer each ACT question. So for instance, on the SAT reading section, you get about 70 seconds per question, but on the ACT, you only get 53 questions. Folks, literally think fast. <laughs> uh, but by the way, if you need to use a calculator to follow along on any of the math that we're just walking you through, folks, you might want to consider the following. The ACT lets you use a calculator for the whole 60 question math section, but the SAT has a 20 question no calculator section. That said, the SAT gives you a formula sheet and the ACT doesn't. Moreover, the multiple choice math questions on the ACT have five options where the SAT has a more manageable four which makes it somewhat easier to weed out the wrong answers on the SAT so that you can pick the right one. One other key difference between the tests is that the ACT has a science section. Now, if you can't tell your RNA from your ATP, don't worry. This section is more about reading data in charts and figures than it is about having previously memorized scientific concepts. But if you don't like analysis, that might be a strike against the ACT. That's a lot of raw data. So you can see why I started off talking about apple pie and chocolate cake. Speaking of which, everything so far has been about personal skill and your preference for one test type over another. So let's look at the other factor that I mentioned at the beginning, your audience. Even if the college of your dream accepts both test scores or requires neither, you'll still want to find a way to stand out when you apply. If you're likely to get as high a score on the SAT as on the ACT, you might want to think about which test your peers are likely to do worse on because they're the ones that you're going to be compared to. To put it another way, if everybody is bringing chocolate cake to a party, then your chocolate cake has to be much better. Maybe it's time to think about bringing a delicious apple pie instead. Folks, I hate to do this to you, but we're gonna break it down with a little more math. In 2019, more than 2.2 million students took the SAT and the average score dropped to 1059, of course, out of a total of 1600. But by contrast, 
1.8 million students took the ACT, with 41% of students getting less than an 18 out of 36 on English, 61% scoring under 22, again out of 36 on the math. That's an overall average of 20.7 out of a possible 36. These averages are somewhat equivalent, but nearly 400,000 more students, that is more competition, took the SAT. If you've got the math chops, the ACT's smaller field might be the better place for you to shine. I should pause here to say that the ACT may once again become the more popular test in the land, especially with the changes coming in September of 2020. But the principle still stands. Sitting for the lesser taken test may offer you a slight edge. You might also want to consider location. I mentioned earlier that some states require students in their high schools to take one test or the other. And since the majority of students attending public colleges head to colleges that are within two hours of their home, you can somewhat predict what the most common test submitted to that school is going to be. This gives you the opportunity to stand out by taking the other one. In the end though, whether you go with the SAT or the ACT, it is going to come down to one thing and folks, one thing only, and that is personal taste. Do yourself a favor, take a bite out of both tests, figure out which one is going to be the right one for you and focus on that test. Folks, thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel where things are often delicious, always nutritious. And folks, you can find out much more about our videos as you continue watching. Be well, friends.